Clark. Business of the Senate notice of motion number one in the name of Senator Roberts, a reference to the Rural and Regional Affairs and Transport References Committee. Senator Roberts. Thank you, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President. As a servant to the many different people who make up our one Queensland community, One Nation continues to, to support a fair outcome for all those in the Murray-Darling Basin in Queensland and across the connected river system. The government last week advanced a bill that evolved drastically as it passed through Senate debate. Some would say catastrophically through Senate debate. First, the Greens demanded changes for their support. Then Senator Van, Senator Thorpe and Senator Pocock added some tinsel for their respective ideologies. Much like a Christmas tree that the whole family decorated, it looks a bit crook. In fact, I would suggest nobody knows how the bill is going to actually work. The Council of Water Ministers dealt with the bill in August this year and failed to issue a communique, which is a record of proceedings that would ordinarily detail specific approval or rejection of suggested changes to the Murray-Darling Basin Plan 2012. A communique is available on their website for every meeting going back years, except August. When I requested it, Assistant Minister McAllister failed to provide it after first saying it was available. Instead, the Federal Water Minister, Tanya Plibersek, put out a political statement that an agreement was made between the Federal, New South Wales, South Australia, Queensland and Australian Capital Territory governments to deliver the Murray-Darling Basin Plan in full. Firstly, the ACT government is not a state. It is not a voting signatory to the Murray-Darling Basin Plan. So the so-called agreement that was reached was only between three of the required four states. Secondly, what was the agreement? I hear you saying an agreement was reached, yet no proof of that has been posted up beyond the Minister's statement. Did New South Wales sign on to allowing as much as 700 gigalitres of buybacks from New South Wales farmers or not? New South Wales Premier Min said in a recent press release he did not sign off on water buybacks and instead only signed off on $700 million in federal money for water projects. Victoria has not agreed to this legislation and is not a party to the buybacks. They've made that abundantly clear. South Australia has not been honest with their farmers. I have not heard a word about the buybacks that are being planned from South Australian irrigators. Now, here you say, hang on just a minute. The water is for South Australia. That's true. The government is about to buy back water for South Australian river flow from South Australia. <laughs> their, ir their irrigators can wave at their water as it flows out to sea. I call on the South Australian Premier, Peter Malinouskas, to answer a simple question. How much water did you agree could be purchased from South Australian farmers in that August meeting? How much, Premier? I'm hearing that as much as 40 gigalitres is intended to be purchased from South Australia, which only has an irrigated, irrigation pool of 400 gigalitres. That's 10 per cent. Queensland Premier Palaszczuk has not said a word about water buyback. With an election coming up next year, the farming community should know what the Premier has just done to them, but they don't know. She won't tell them. I asked the Queensland Premier to be honest, to come clean. How much Queensland water did you agree to be bought back in Queensland? I understand the game all the Premiers, except Victoria, are playing. Don't talk about water buybacks. Blame the federal government. Defend Labor's vote against the Greens and the Teals. Get re-elected. Shh. Such a simple plan except that it breaches the rules around the operation of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan itself. All state premiers must sign off to every change. The minute one state is out of something like water buybacks, the other states have to pick up the slack. My state of Queensland loses more water and with that a further hollowing out of the bush. The Water Amendment Restoring Our Rivers Bill 2023 was heavily amended, and many of us say catastrophically amended. In the House of Representatives, the Water Amendment had five crossbench and 31 government amendments. 31 government amendments. In the Senate, the bill had a haphazard mis mishmash of 20 government amendments. That's a total of 51 government amendments on a bill that was introduced to Parliament. Plus five in the Senate from the Greens and eight from the crossbench. 20 amendments from the bill in the Senate, plus 31 in, in the House of Reps reflecting yet another bill brought into the Senate without adequate thought and becoming a scrambled mess due to opportunistic trading and deals. 
This is no way to govern our country. It is shoddy governance. It is dishonest governance. And who pays? Farmers, farming families, rural communities, regional Australia, everyone and anyone who eats. The reason there were so many amendments, including government amendments, is because the process of consultation was a complete farce. The government consulted with everyone they knew who would agree with them. That was it. Irrigators and rural communities were ignored. The bill was pushed through a committee the government controlled and sent to vote when it was so full of holes. 51 holes that the government recognised. And so the parliamentary process tried to fix the bill. The question remains, did we fix it? Did the premiers approve all these amendments? They could not possibly have been approved. The Senate barely had time to read them. The premiers have most notably not even seen the amendments. The Environment and Communication and Legislation Committee reported on what has become a very different bill. The premiers voted on a different bill, a bill they couldn't agree on, and they haven't seen the latest version. At the very least, we need to see how these amendments fit together and what the impact of these amendments will be on the Murray-Darling Basin, on the environment and on the communities in the basin. Potential harm from the bill needs to be detected now and plans for mitigation canvassed immediately. We need to determine exactly what the rules around changes to the plan are so amendments are done correctly next time. We need to assess what happens when the federal government starts buying up water in Victoria and the Victorian government rejects or objects. This legislation may be a High Court challenge waiting to happen. As a new senator back in 2017, when I was in southwest Queensland in the town of St George in the Boulogne Shire, I heard firsthand of the damage, the serious, enormous damage to Queenslanders and to northern New South Wales communities. Senator Paul, as a result of that, Senator Pauline Hanson and I travelled the Murray from Albury to the Murray Mouth, listening to regional communities in southern New South Wales, northern Victoria and South Australia. Later, when I returned to the Senate in 2019, I flew over the whole basin listening, listening closely to farmers and communities and to people in, who had an argument for the environment. I then crossed the basin four times from east to west, listening in Queensland, northern New South Wales, central New South Wales, southern New South Wales and Victoria and South Australia, including the regions of South Australia. We developed a credible water policy based on science and people's needs, environmental needs and the national needs. The late John Bristow was a world-renowned expert on water. He visited our country in 2007. I've, re I've read a paper that he's published on it and declared that we had the best water management in the world. A water expert, international water expert, and he said we had the best water management. Then, in, later in 2007, John Howard as Prime Minister and Malcolm Turnbull as Water Minister introduced the Water Act of 2007. Some of the features include it's repeated four or five times now. The aims of the Murray-Darling Basin of the Water Act are to include compliance with international agreements. What the hell's that got to do with our federal legislation? Secondly, to change from the Murray-Darling Basin Commission to the Murray-Darling Basin Authority, and that destroyed cooperation that had successfully managed the basin with cooperation between states and the Commonwealth. Commonwealth departments started to dictate and started to lie. John Howard and Malcolm Turnbull's Water Act separated water allocations from land ownership, a catastrophe that has to be corrected. The Water Act, to its credit, required a register of water trades, yet Liberal National and Labor Party have refused to install a water registry, even though it's required by the legislation known as the Water Act. I moved an amendment to require a water register to be developed. It was passed in the Senate, rejected in the lower house by the Liberals, Nationals and, and Labor Party. We now see that another feature of the Murray-Darling Basin plan is that, led, is that it led to contradictions of science and nature, completely reversed the science. This is a mess due to globalist policies working through the Greens, the Howard Turnbull Water Act of 2007. On his next visit to Australia in 2011, John Bristow 
proclaimed that Australia had slumped to the worst, the world's worst water management for one reason, politically driven policy. He belled the culprit, the people in this parliament, the federal parliament at federal level. While mournful of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan's catastrophic foundation, for now as a result of the catastrophic mismatch of latest legislation changes last week, we need to scrutinise just that latest legislation while keeping in the back of our mind the mess that the Murray-Darling Basin Plan is. Only a committee of inquiry can sort this out and ensure such a, a monumental, haphazard, dishonest change to a 10-year-old plan is the right thing to do. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Before you sit down, Senator Roberts, you might just want to move the, your motion? Yes. I move my motion as, as the clerk introduced. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.